excuse me. A founding member of the rock group Genesis, singer and songwriter Peter Gabriel broke ground with his own definition of world music. During the 1980s, he recently released his new hit album, Us, and it is now, he is now on tour. As an active human rights advocate, he's also spearheaded efforts on behalf of Amnesty International and a new project called Witness, and I'm pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. This album, which I have right here, uh, is more personal. I think so. You. Why? What did you want to say, and why did this turn for you? Well, um, it was at the end of a period in which uh, my marriage had broken up and another relationship I'd been in uh, had failed. And so I was looking uh, into myself and doing some group therapy work and really starting to try and uh, understand what my part was in, in all this stuff. And uh, I think given that it was preoccupation for a number of years, I thought it was the right thing to put it out. And I also as a an English male who had a certain amount of cynicism and reserve and fear about doing any work on myself, I actually realized that I got a lot out of it, and I was hoping that it might encourage other people uh, to, to, um, to consider that. How do you express your emotions deep and at the same time try to be sensitive to the sensitivities of other people? Uh, when you say sensitive... Well, of the two people. women you're referring oh, to. How do you write songs well, uh, about that without uh, hurting them? Um, I did it from my perspective because I think there are sort of, I feel like, three parts to it. There's his, hers, and theirs. Yes. And this was his. Um, and I also talked to both the ladies in question, and uh, um, I think they're both on the sort of work on themselves as as well. So I think there was a, a sort of open spirit. And I've always admired uh, people like John Lennon who've been able to portray some of the less flattering parts of themselves and include that within the music. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's enough male songwriters that deal with those things um, from a sort of full perspective. Why do you think that's true? Uh, because there's a confusion, I think, with rock and roll between the two horses that we try and ride, one of which is um, to do with message, integrity, and uh, trying to say something meaningful, and the other is being entertaining and uh, to do with myth making and image making um, and I think we're, we're on, uh, trying to ride both horses simultaneously and uh, so there's a, a danger of uh, destroying the one by uh, honoring the other. Tell me about writing songs and the process for you. Well I'm a rhythm freak, I started off yeah. as a drummer and so one of the things that really drew me into uh, music of other countries was rhythm and, and voice and passionate performances. And if I hear a great groove, uh, then that really sets the song going. And it's the, it's the fuel on which the song runs. I mean, there'll be some pieces that I write which are melody-based, but uh, in musical terms, it's often started with the, the rhythm. You can take your hands off the keyboard and it still continues to feel good. So. That's a great tool. That's um, the skeleton. That's the skeleton. And then in terms of lyric, uh, there are all sorts of things that catch my eye or something I read in a newspaper or I see on television or conversation. Um, so there's a notebook which uh, gets elaborated on and then you try and yes. make the marriage. And, and I think they're different things. You know, the music has a character of its own. The words have a character of their own. And they don't always want to work together. And so what do you do to make that happen? Lubricate it. <laughs> uh, How do you lubricate? Um, well, with jelly, I think, and yeah. uh, um, it's just it's a lot of hard work, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. Because lyrics can pull down the intensity when you inject them into the process. Definitely. And uh, vice versa, I mean, it can work the other way, but they can also serve each other. Uh, but certainly one of the reasons that I loved working on the Passion record and on the Last Temptation score right. on which that was based was that... The Last I Temptation could, of Jesus Christ, which you did for Martin Scorsese. Right. And I had the chance as a singer, too, to make noises without words. Um, and that actually gave me a, a lot of freedom. I know a lot of singers who feel like this. Um, at the same time, you know, when the words work and they deliver, uh, you've got something which is better than both. When when you look at at uh, rock and roll, are you happy at where it is uh, in the what's happening in rock and roll today? 
Um, it's, I think it's lost some of its independent uh, free thinking status. You know, it, uh, it is more commercial. But I'm a, a great believer in the possibilities of a new technology. And as yet, um, it's not in the hands of the big corporations. Although seeing these mergers between phone companies and entertainment companies, I think they're taking up a very strong position. Meaning, technology may become more paramount than it is now. Uh, that I think um, things like interactive technologies, CD-ROM, uh, virtual reality, a lot of a lot of the computer-based stuff, really is going to provide a medium which is going to be right at the center of our culture, coming out you know, through our televisions. And and at the moment, that scene isn't sewn up, and there is room for a few uh, revolutionaries to storm in there, and for some artists to get some role in the means of distribution and the way that that thing gets shaped. And I think a lot of these peripheral activities are providing a noose around the uh, traditional entertainment industries. I mean, there's this big communications, education, ent entertainment um, merger is, I think, going to produce all sorts of fascinating hybrids and very quickly. You really are interested in this interactivity. I mean, you, you work a lot with computers and... Well, uh, I love it. I think it gives uh, a lot of possibilities to the audience and um, we've, with uh, Brian Eno and Laurie Anson's yeah. project we've been working on which has been a dream for a long time which uh, we're still uh, intending to make a reality which is a, a sort of experience park where we could bring together all sorts of teams whether it's psychologists, ar architects, uh, all sorts of people to work on in teams and designing experiences that would mm -hmm. challenge people and really one of the key shifts is that it enables anybody to think of themselves as an artist you know I hate it when people say oh I'm not a creative person you know, in many cultures in the world there's no such thing as a non-creative person it's just assumed that you can express yourself through music through visuals you know, through video or, or whatever mm -hmm. medium and uh, may be and I think um, people should be encouraged to, to throw away this concept of, of talent certainly some people as with a, a language will be more skilled than others but they really should be open to everyone and I think a lot of the work that artists put out will uh, be available in a finished form uh, with the vision of the artist as intended but it will also be presented in a way that it's just a collection of collage material that you can take elements that you like and mix them with other people's work and, and in a sense uh, three generations on from karaoke what did you get involved in? I mean, there was a time in your life where you moved towards world music. Um, it was around the uh, middle 70s. Or, um, I started, I mean, one pivotal moment was, I think, when they moved Radio 4 in England, which is the uh, talk uh, discussion program, and which is the thing I normally listen to, and they'd shifted the wavelength, and I was searching around the radio, and I heard this African music, and I wrote down the name and chased it out and then decided that this was something that was a wonderful singing and rhythms that I should be trying to incorporate and feed off in my own work. And what did you do then? Then I started uh, trying to listen to a lot of things and I worked with a group of friends um, and we set up uh, the first sort of world music festival which yeah. is now functioning in 14 countries and, and is going to be coming over here this year. It's called WOMAD. And it's had a sort of checkered career in terms of uh, finances, but um, in, in terms of spirit, it's, it's very strong. And we initially did it because we wanted to present uh, the work of many of these artists who, at, at that time, couldn't get their records into the shops and uh, couldn't get seen in concert except in a rare sort of folk, uh, uh, high art, cultural occasions. And, and we felt that there was a, a sort of low art, if you like, a, a pop thrust and... Uh, and I, I'm certain that you know you could take anyone off the street, play them music of many many countries, and there would be at least one or two things that would touch them and reach resonate them. within yeah. their own. And and the only reason that rhythm. they don't yeah get get to hear those things is through uh, exposure in the media. And I think wherever you're born on this planet, you should have an equal opportunity to get uh, your work heard. How goes the human rights movement today? Well, I'm not sure I'm best placed to um, answer that. I'm, you know, I, I work on a few projects, but it, it's um, still, uh, I mean, many other people who have much 
full but of it's it. It's been a real cause for you, has it not? It's been something, yes, I mean, I was asked to do it originally and, and then found myself getting uh, very drawn to it emotionally. And, and just recently we've been trying to get this witness project off the ground, which uh, had a lot of help from Reebok Foundation. But it, the aim was simply to get um, handycam video aid cameras out uh, into the hands of activists. And uh, also now fax machines and a few other things. Uh, so they can document abuses? Exactly, and it was an idea that was on the table for a while, but after the Rodney King beatings, uh, people suddenly woke up to the, to the power that a random video eight uh, um, film can have. And, and I'm sure that uh, um, I mean, we only just started to, to get the cameras out and the footage back, but uh, already I think the, uh, one camera was used to document uh, childhood slavery in Indian carpet factories uh, where kids get sold in aged 8 to 13 to the uh, factories and, and I think um, there's a documentary now being made by ABC uh, as a result and, and there are a few examples but I think you can write a lot of text about it but the visual uh, information still grabs people much harder and faster and forces governments to react quicker. Mm. Are there uncharted territories in music that you want to go to? Uh, I think there's still a, an enormous amount of possibilities, but I, I mean, I'm particularly interested in the sort of multimedia possibilities which incorporate music at the moment, you know, which mm. uh, CD-ROM is an example. Well, what's interesting to me, and tell me if this is a contradiction, is this is a very personal album here as you talk about your own pain and relationships, and which is what music has been about for a long, 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 long time. You know, and, and at the same time, you're interested in all this technological future mm. and how those two come together. Well, to me, they're all part of the same, um, that many people have the view of technology as this uh, cold, dehumanizing yeah. uh, influence on our lives. And I think the next generation can be exactly the opposite of that, can um, superhumanize our lives. Can, uh, and it's interesting now that uh, women are taking a much bigger role uh, with uh, computers and, and some of these sort of CD-ROM projects uh, that they are, I think, instinctively more interested in the emotional possibilities of, of the technology and uh, you know, less the sort of sci-fi shoot 'em up yeah. aesthetic. You travel with a PC? I do, yeah. What kind? Um, well, we're, we're confirmed Mac users. We have about 30 on the road now, which yeah. I think... Uh, and, and they're connected to each other. I mean, everybody, everybody can speak, can, can communicate with um, each other. Sometimes, uh, I mean, diff a, a networking is diff what I mean. Yeah, d I mean, different people have networking possibilities, but as individuals, we we tend to. Uh, um, can you write on them? And write songs on? Yes, I write my lyrics uh, on on the PC now because it's, it's so useful playing around with. Uh, all the rubbish that you generate. <laughs> yeah. Now, what about? Is this still done by your own company? Um, yes, we distribute uh, through it's Virgin, but, it, and, and, but it's also, it's, you have your own recording studio, do you still? Yeah, I mean, I have an English, uh, well, rest of world company and, and uh, North American company, um, Virgin and Geffen Records, and so, so they are the people that I, as an artist, uh, am contracted to. But uh, the company, we have many artists from different, different countries that uh, we now put out, and that, that goes through Virgin. How long do you want to play rock and roll? Um, I will continue making music as long as I can breathe, uh, and whether people pay me to do it or not. I mean, I know whenever I go away on a holiday and there isn't a piano around or something I can make noises on, I, I sort of pine for it after a while. Uh, but I, I do think there's a lot of other uh, things that can be, be done with it. And I think um, the, there's going to be a visual language, if you like, that will dominate uh, and, and perhaps have a greater influence than text in a lot of ways. Uh, and um, that in the same ways that our kids may be very at home with computers, games, and perhaps quicker at programming the, the video recorders than, than we are, I think their children will think, talk, and eat in sort of multimedia bites. You know, there won't be a separation. There'll be a sort of combined thinking so that you can use other media, you can use sound, music as a sort of navigation tool and information displays, um, visually 
visual, audio, and uh, text, I think, will we'll all find strange ways to merge. What's your favorite cut on this? On this, um, I don't know. I, I like uh, different things. Probably Blood of Eden, Come Talk to Me at the moment. Blood of Eden, uh, Come Talk to Me. Uh, the, the album's called Us. Peter Gabriel's been our guest. Thank you. Thank you Pleasure very much. Pleasure to see you again. Uh, next, we have an interview that I recorded early with filmmaker Peter Friedman. He edited 40 hours of a video diary that was recorded by two friends with AIDS. He made it into a compelling documentary, Silver Lake Life, The View From Here. It airs tomorrow at 10 p.m. on PBS's POV.